Good morning. I'd like, or actually, good afternoon. Sorry. Uh, I'd like to to thank the organizers for the invitation and and coming coming here and show some of our, some of our our work. It's very nice to be in connection with some theoretical colleagues. As as you see, I'll show some experimental data that can be, let's say, use it for connection or working together with, with, with some theoretical groups to, to move on and understand better the systems. Let's see if this works. So I will, I'll, I'll talk about structure in investigation of oriented systems at nanoscale. Uh, along the talk, this will be better explained. So here is to show when you, when, when you want to investigate systems at the nanoscale, you can use modeling or simulation, as we, as we heard here in the, in, in the several talks, and, and we, we, we will hear more in the, in, in the next days. But you, you can actually also use experimental methods to try to obtain measurements or experimental data to let's say, ret retrieve structure of param parameters. And one of the key methods is, uh, let's say, the microscopy methods, because then I'll really allow you to see things. But uh, in order to do, uh, uh, let's say, let my microscopy, you usually interact a lot with your sample, with your system. And, in some cases, it, it is not really, really, really possible to, to use these methods. Other approach is to use the scattering methods, uh, either by light, x-rays, neutrons. Uh, when you do scattering methods, for example, small angle x-ray, e scattering, neutron, or even x-ray G fraction, you have access to a part of the so-called reciprocal E space. And having access to this space, you can use or you can apply some modeling strategies and obtain experimental data or structural information. So I will focus or I will show some examples of using small angle x-ray E scattering, which allow you to go from, let's say, from nano up to just below micrometer size, which will give information about, let's say, polymers, proteins, micelles, and several uh, systems in the in the nano scale. Okay, and we and when is when when is possible, you, you you can combine these methods with with other other types of uh, of uh, of methods. One of the good points about scattering is that uh, you can easily apply it to so solution systems or to any to to different types of systems and you can use this to have experimental data so I one of the typical setup for for SACS is like this you have a source at the X-rays, neutrons, or, or, or light, you collimate your beam. Usually, is a th transmission experiment, so the beam passes through your sample. If we talk about X-rays, they interact with the electron cloud, uh, cl clouds, and then by collecting the spherical wave that comes out from the from the in interaction, we can have some 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 let's say data which can 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 give some structural information we can apply this to solutions solids gels usually is what we call low resolution method and since we we don't have access to 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 the uh, let's say atomic scale but still as i showed you before we can go down to the nano scale. And also, you can investigate with this method uh, amorphous systems without any sort of clear order, okay? 
So uh, I, I want to go into all the uh, equations or details, but basically you have your incoming being, usually we describe this as a, as a, as a plan wave, and then you have the scattering interaction. And uh, for a fixed particle, when you, when, when, when you have fixed particles in, in, your, in your system, if you do the experiment, what you collect is a, is a, is, is, it's a kind of anisotropic 2D image, which is related to the Fourier transformation of the, the particle shape. Actually, the scattering amplitude is the Fourier transformation of the particle shape, but since we don't measure uh, amplitudes, we, we measure, let's say, intensity. We do this, we have to, to do this, this double integral in order to have this, uh, this data. Uh, when, we are, when we are talking about system randomly oriented, we, we do some uh, more two integrals in order to have uh, average on the, on, the, on the reciprocal E space, and then we, 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 we won't have this uh, oriented scattering image, but also, but on the other hand, we will have this randomly oriented image, which, which means that if you do cuts here, you also have the same scattering profile. In these cases, what we do, is, is we simply in, in, integrate the full circle. So this is just to have a kind of, of, of picture of what we have when we have random oriented particles or fixed, fixed particles. But before we have to, to be able to measure data, uh, we have nowadays a new synchrotron being finished there in Campinas. In this synchrotron, we will have standard Sachs beam lines, coherent Sachs beam line, and, and, and for some wavelengths or synchrotron series, we'll be one of the best in the whole world. Several beam, beam lines are already in commissioning, but in the last years, we managed to build up a very nice infrastructure for lab, laboratory laboratory SACS equipments in the Institute of Physics at University of Sao Paulo. We managed to create a, a multi-user center that is open for the community. And this center is composed of three instruments. This is the website if you are interested for, for more information. Um, <clears throat> this machine or, or this center is also uh, registered in the USP Multi, which is an, a center also for the, for the multi-users uh, facilities. And uh, these uh, are some, some pictures of, uh, of the three instruments. Uh, in all, in all cases, we have a, a photon a 2D pixel detectors, which allow really photon, photon counting. The, the machines, it, they, they, are, they are built in some way that we have a good, a good flux. This is a typical flux that we have in your, in your system. It's uh, three or four orders uh, of magnitude below synchrotrons, but, but still, I can tell you that this, uh, these flux are good enough to have good E scattering data, even for very low e scattering power systems. And uh, uh, in particular for this machine Zeus 2.0, which, which has 10 meters long, we can go up to very low angles, which means that we can go, or the, that we can uh, measure very large systems or very, very, very large particles uh, close to the micrometer size. 
Also for this machine, we have three tubes, copper, chromium, and molyb molybdenum, which gives some flexibility in, in, in energy change when this is needed. Uh, inside of the, of the chamber, we also have another detector, which is this one, which allows us to do simu simultaneous sax and wax or wide angle X-ray measurement, measurements. And as I said, this facility is, is, is open for, for, the, for the users. We have several setups. Please, if you, if you want, you can go there and, and check it. Uh, we, we want to, to use this, this, this method to investigate oriented systems. And one of the uh, examples that I will show here is liquid, liquid crystals. Uh, this, this work is in collaboration with, with some colleagues from USP, Antonio Neto, which we'll, we, which we'll talk here tomorrow morning, Arnaldo and Dennis, which are technicians there in our group, and also Professor Oscar Santos from Paraná. Uh, from this collaboration, we just published this article that uh, where we investigated some, some either structure and also optical properties of this, uh, of this system. Uh, I want to go, go, go into the details of the system itself, but I will focus on the, on the method that we use to obtain structural information from the SACS data, at least at this point. Uh, as we know, liquid, liquid, liquid crystals, are, they, are, they are based or they are composed of usually anisotropic particles, either elongated or flat. And depending on the way that you build up your system, you, you can uh, guide this to, to some typical phases. Here I show some, some, some typical phases for liquid crystals, either pneumatic, ismetic, ismetic C, among others. And uh, this, uh, since these particles uh, and these ar arrangements, uh, this, these particles, they have nano, nanometric sizes, which means that if you use X-rays, you, you you'll be able to have some structural information. And also, some some of these arrangements they 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 have some uh, some some size close to the to the to the light length scale. So this gives some very interesting polarization effects for light. And uh, actually, the Institute of Physics of University of São Paulo. They have a very long history on investigating liquid crystals using uh, experimental methods and also uh, e e scattering methods. We have some uh, very early works from LIA in, in, in the late 70s. And, and here I show some 2D sax images from Antonio Neto that he collected in, in Lure in the, in the middle 80s. For this case here, they they have some some liquid 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 crystals where they added some magnetic nanoparticles and when you have when you apply magnetic field on this system you can uh, force a kind of uh, overall orientation and when you shine this with x-rays you have this 2d experiment or to the an anisotropic scattering data. So one of our goals is to, uh, to, to try to model this, because this was one ap approach that was uh, lacking in the literature. So what we did was to reproduce all this scattering data. These are, are, are two examples, but we have several other there in our, in our lab. And uh, having, having been able to to, to 
prepare or set up the system in, in this way, we can collect this, uh, this nice image, and this nice sax data now, how we can model this in order to have structural information. So one, uh, since we have orientation or intrinsic orientation, one interesting approach that we can do is we can try to obtain some indications of the other parameters' moments directly from the scattering data. This, uh, one of the approaches for doing that is shown here in this, uh, in this article from Moshe Deutsch. Uh, basically, what, what he does is to, uh, you select some, some features in your scattering data, and then based on these features, you can be able to, to, uh, to integrate over this, this, uh, this feature. This integration gives to you some indications on the, on the orientational function that may, let, let's say, drive or indicate your liquid crystal. And, the, and in the article, he shows all the mathematical indication that Basically, in short words, allows you to, to ob obtain the second order uh, parameter and the, and the fourth order parameter from the e scattering data and uh, applying this to, to some of the liquid crystal data that we have, we can, we can model this with, using the simple peak functions and applying these integrals you can have some numbers or some indications for the second and fourth moments of the order parameter. Also, this type of analysis is very interesting because from the peak positions, you have very nice indications of the angle that your system is oriented. This is key because now what we can do is having these angles, we can do cuts. And from these cuts, we can integrate in this, these two images in order to have 1D curves, because modeling 1D curves, it, it is much faster, at, at, at least at this point, uh, than model the, the full 2D image. Uh, from, the, from the 2D image itself, we can, we can find uh, correlation broad peaks, in, in some cases, we can have more than one order, indicating that lamellar phases, it's a, it's a good indication for this system, at least for this one here. And uh, since we are dealing with, uh, with, uh, with systems made by, by micelles, we, can, we need to take into account the micelle shapes and, and also their structural uh, agglomeration, meaning that we have to, to take into account what we call form factor and structure factor. So what we did was to implement a model that can uh, uh, fit out this, uh, this is, is slices, in, including these features that I mentioned. I mean, the, the micellar shape, the, their arrangement, what we find out that since, uh, since, we, since you have micelles close to, together, you also have some interaction among the micelles, and this uh, gives rise to this additional structural factor that we had to include. And since for the, or, uh, for the orientation of the liquid crystals, we need to add some magnetic nanoparticles, we find out that uh, when the agglomerates are oriented, the nanoparticles itself, they form some, some sort of, uh, let's say, aggregates, which were taken into account by this additional, ad additional part here. So as you can see uh, here, I show some, some of the contributions of each one of these of this parts. And basically, by using this, we can, we can model the e, e scattering data and then obtain all these 
structural parameters. One of the difficult parts here was that what we measure is the scattering intensity of everything. And we are trying to decouple this in particle shape and particle interaction. So what we, uh, one of the interesting points is to, to try to get as much information as possible from the, from the micelles itself. In this case here, even if you dilute a lot, you, you cannot really have free micelles in, in, in solution because this system only, is, uh, l only, only form liquid, liquid crystals after a certain concentration. If you dilute more, what you, what, what you have is, is, a, is a clear phase separation. But here, we diluted as much as possible. Here we have, as you see, 95% of, of, uh, of water randomly oriented. And in this case here, we, we were able to have a very good indication of the, of the particle shape or of the micelle shape, and we managed to successfully model this as a core particle, as, as you see here, a, a kind of uh, overall shape or overall picture. And, uh, and here we have some, some, some numbers for the, for the inner radius thickness and, and uh, uh, ellipsoid asymmetry. Having this, we we could go one step further and model the oriented system. We apply this for several cases here. I showed just two, two examples. And, uh, and from this fit, we could obtain more detailed information for the, for the micelle shapes and also for the overall structure factor uh, for, for conformation. So this. Uh, this is very interesting. Uh, this is a, a very powerful model. We are applying this for several cases. Actually, uh, one of uh, this, this lady, Vera, she, she saw our, 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 our article. She entered in, 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 in contact with us because she, she had several uh, synchrotron data that she, she couldn't fit, and then here, I show some of the images. We started a collaboration, combining SACS data, uh, light my microscopy, and rheology. We, we put all this together in an, in an article, and, and we just sent this. Hopefully, it will be accepted in, in, some, in, uh, in some time. So uh, just to finish, I will, I will show or mention other type of oriented system. Hair. Everybody has hair, has hair, one more or less, but still, we always have. And, and this is a very interesting system because uh, some, of the pre, uh, some, some of the initial re results that we obtained uh, was uh, was, let, was, was a kind of good at, attraction for Rodia Sovereign Group, and they made a, an, a collaboration agreement with us. Right, right now, this collaboration is just paying a postdoc and a, and a master's student, but hopefully this will grow up. So, and, and this, is, this work, it is made by my postdoc, Sibeli Lima, and my master's student, Augusto Bandeira, and, 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 and here we, we are interested on investigate changes in the, in the hair structure due by several types of interactions. For example, temperature. Hair, it's a very com complicated system. I mean, uh, usually people say, well, hair, it is, it is, it is based basically built by three parts, cutical cortex, cutical this, this outer part that we, also, uh, that we actually see, the cortex, this, this inner part, and gluing all these 
together we have what we call cell membrane complex. But this is a really sim uh, very strong sim simplification. Uh, here is a very high hierarchical structure starting from, let's say, micrometer size down to almost angstrom size. And uh, since we have all these features in the, in the nanoscale, x-rays are a very interesting way to investigate this. Uh, we, we have some articles pu published on it here. We combine it, x-rays, neutron, and several other types of uh, methods to understand some, some features of the inner structure of the hair when you heat it up. Uh, and here shows some, some typical 2D SACS images that we collected in our, in our equipment. And, uh, and as you can see, the, the images, they are very, very rich. So it is, it is not so easy to understand what is going on, but we are, we are working on it. So in this case here, one of the goals was to, to un, uh, understand in the, in the nanoscale what, what happened to the hair when you, when you hit it. And, and, and several people, mostly women, let's say use several of these equipments for hair e straightening, et cetera, and also several, several, several types of, uh, of chemical products. products. So we are, we are entering on it to, and to try to see what, what happened to the inner structure at the nano e scale. So this is what one of the goals. So just to study here, it is, a, it is already a complicated point because if you want to publish this, you have to have what they call certified hair. What this means, you have to have hairs that had, had never been treated with aggressive products. So some companies really sell this. I mean, they, I, was, uh, I was reading that they, they made a kind of, of contract with the parents when the children is in the belly. So then when they, they born, they never, let's say, wash with very strong products. With this, they can cert certify and sell this by a, a very interesting price. So having this, we have several types of certified hair. You can, you can do several types of experiments. Here, we combine sacs with, with uh, thermal an an analysis, either thermal gravimetry, which allows you to see what, what happened to the, to, the, to the hair when you heat it up, and also mass e spectroscopy. Here is a, it's a typical T, TG plot, which shows that, well, when you, when you, when you heat it up hair, initially you, you lost mass, basically by, by the loss of, uh, of water, but when you, when you heat up a lot, you start having decomposition because several, several parts of the, the hair starts to evaporate by, by pyrolysis. And, uh, and, and doing some an analysis of these, these gases, you can show that, well, you have initially what is, what is getting out is, is water, and then later on some other parts, which is basically the, the decomposition of the amino acids. So what we can do is we can do in situ measurements, basically putting the hair there and heat it up and do in situ sacs, sacs measurements. Here I show some, some of the typical curves. And since you have a machine that, that can go up to very long distance and, and, and very short distance, we can do ultra sacs, 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 I mean, we can do the, the same ex experiments in, 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 in several distances. And having this, you can, you can see what is, what, is, what is going on in this 2D image, but also you can combine the cuts 
in this way, allowing you to go from, let's say, angstroms uh, uh, up to thousands of angstroms. So now we are working out methods to model this, this full curve in order to have more detailed structural information. So uh, I, I hope I could show you that uh, having a lab system like we have there in the Institute of Physics, it, it is very useful because basically what you can do is you can measure when you have sample and, and not when you have the beam time. And this really, really makes a difference, principally when you are working on with some tricky, let's say, synthesis procedure and, and, and things like that. And these machines, they, they work very complementary with uh, large is, is scale systems like, like the new series. Uh, even with the relative low flux when you compare to the synchrotons, I show you that you have very good quality data. Uh, sometimes it is necessary to work out some advanced modeling in order to be able to, to retrieve as much as possible information from your scattering data. And uh, as, we saw, as you saw, for when you, when you have oriented system, you increase the amount, let's say, of information in your data. But on, on the other hand, you have to have more work on the modeling methods. Still, uh, if you are interested, please contact us in order to either collaborate or to, to use our SAC center. But I really hope that it is, a, it is, it, it is possible to combine forces in order to use this, the very nice theoretical approaches that you guys have with some experimental methods in order to have, let's say, more inf information in the system that we are investigating. So I would like to thank all, all the co collaborators in, in our work, all the agencies that allow us to, to have fun with science, and you for your kind attention. Thank you very much. So thank you very much for the nice talk. Danilo is so th thank you, Cristiano, for the talk. Uh, I have a question about the, your, your comparison. You, you, you have some map in between the model and your sex experimental data. I assume the model has some predictions for the structure function, for instance, that you can compare and fit parameters using some sort of least square optimization exactly, or yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, like that. And my question is, how, how, how much do you trust your model? Like, uh, 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 this, is a, this is actually a good point, because when you, when you see uh, an expression with several parameters, etc., some people say, well, with, with this high number of parameters, you can, you can fit everything, either an elephant. Yes and not, because uh, when, you, when you go to the re, 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 reciprocal e space, it is very interesting that uh, each one of the parts that we use in our model corresponds, uh, let's say, to a, to a certain region in the, in the reciprocal e space. So when we are talking about the, the, the micellar contribution, this mostly gives, gives rise to the ending part. We, 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 we tried several types of, uh, of systems, let's say gel phases or e sponge phases or different types. And the only one that really modeled this in the correct way or in the good way was this core shell micelle. And also, you know, uh, we, in this case here, we also did this uh, di dilution measurement in, in order to really be sure that this assumption was, was right. Sachs data is low resolution and usually low information. So you, you have to combine this with several other experimental data in order to, to really be able to, 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 
to have a, guy, a, a high de degree of test on what you have. But you are, you are right. You, you, you really have to be careful in this way, OK? Yes? Well, my question has to do also with the model. Uh, um, does, when you, you measured your form factor with a very dilute system, yes. don't you expect uh, the form to, to change if you have a more concentrated question? And just yeah, uh, yeah. You, are, you are right. But here was, in, in, uh, was the idea only to show that, well, even for this dilute case, we have mices. Mm -hmm. For the more concentrated case, we also fit the, the radius. So if, cha if, if anything changes in, in the micellar shape, et cetera, mm -hmm. we have also this in the fit measurement. So it's like that. OK, so maybe I wanted sure, to. Sure. You, you show there a structure aggregate, uh, uh, yes. aggregate structure factor. What, could you explain what this is? Yes, yes. This, I mean, uh, uh, we saw that we concluded this because we have uh, we, we we did the same measurements without adding magnetic nano nanoparticle uh, these molecules they have some uh, some um, some magnetic moments so if you if you apply uh, a force field and and wait hours or days they will align and, uh, and, 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 and in this case, we could see typical peaks like this, but without this part here. This part only appears when you have the magnetic nano, nanoparticles added. These are needed in order to enhance the orientation, but as we saw, they, 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 they make these large aggregates that that makes this part at low angles, but only this, OK? okay. Yes, thank you. Um, just about this model again. Uh, so you have a, a kind of multi-scale model. So you have one part yeah. that's in uh, one K point, uh, one Q, and another that Something like mostly that. relates yeah. to other yeah. regions. OK, thank you very much. Sometimes it's possible to do this, uh, this, uh, this, this type of strategy, but still, the instructive factor, they will affect here and also this ending part. So you have to really be careful in order to, to end up with some solutions or some <coughs> parameters that make sense. Or there, otherwise, you are just fitting with something that is not useful, OK? Okay, if there are no more questions, we will end the morning session. Thanks again Thank to you the very speaker, much, yes. to Cristiano, and uh, we'll meet at uh, half past two.